Had this boat approximately two months. It is a 2016 low catfish boat and it is 20 feet long. It has about a 96 inch beam on the back. Uh, the 2020, 20, 2020, 2021 boats are basically the same footprint as this boat. If you are interested in this boat, now I'm primarily crappy fish. This boat is actually designed for the cat fisherman, but it uh, does double duty very, very well. And I'm gonna, so I'm going to go over some of the features in this boat, and I'm going to show you a few things that I did to upgrade uh, this particular boat, and a few tips if you own or you have this boat or you're looking for this boat uh, about how to accomplish certain things on the boat. What is happening people? Hey guys, uh, so we're going to do a review on this low 20 foot catfish boat. I actually started this review at the lake and once I went back and reviewed the footage I didn't really like it. I didn't think I explained it very well. So we're going to go over this. Uh, we're going to do this review again on this boat. Uh, so first of all, uh, you know, we're going to talk about the, the, the paint scheme on this boat. It really looks good uh, that you get on this boat. They do a fantastic job. And uh, the wheels, they're good looking wheels on these. And these are 14 inch rims. The aesthetics on this boat is, 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 is very eye appealing. The, the surface, you notice the surface on this boat? Uh, this is a non-slip surface here. It does a fantastic job. I have not, I've had my feet wet a few times and it is not slippery. I like the surface on this boat and it is white reflective. And most of you know it, if you have an olive green boat or a camouflage boat, a lot of, I see a lot of those boats out there in the summertime, those boats are going to be hot. Uh, I really would I would like to have a camouflage boat, but I fish so much in the hot weather that I need this white reflective to be a little cooler uh, or it'll just absolutely burn you up. <clears throat> of course, all of you know this uh, comes with a 70 pound uh, Minn Kota Edge trolling motor uh, that is uh, optional. We'll come back to these Garmin units. Uh, so to start off on the front, uh, I actually added these two pedestals on the front and so that I could fish a uh, multiple fishermen up front. Uh, here on your front, you have uh, an access panel. You can see down in there, I have some of my, uh, just my bass fishing stuff in here. Keep some preservers back here. And uh, this actually runs from uh, here. This is a 50 gallon uh, live well here. This this opening actually runs from here all the way up to here. So there's a lot of room underneath this front here. So basically let's start at the tongue of the boat and work our way back. Uh, as you can see uh, on this it has a uh, it has the uh, surge brake tongue on it. It is a single axle if you can afford it, if you can afford it, I would get a dual axle on this boat this long. Just give me a little more peace of mind. This boat, uh, this boat tows really well. I have an F-150 Ford and, uh, you know, 3.5 and it actually tows just as easy as my 18 foot javelin boat did so i'm very pleased with the way it tows you know the basic hookup on this aluminum aluminum uh trailer it is a heavy duty i-beam trailer you can see the the i-beam on it that is a heavy duty trailer uh, most of the winch and all hookup is pretty much the same i'll let you see up underneath it the v-hole you're looking at the v-hole it has a very sharp v in the front 
a good slick finish on the bottom of it and I will say this hull design is a great design I have fished in some aluminum boats before and when you take some curves at a high rate of speed uh, I've noticed that they skid across the water this boat does not do that uh, I've went through some S curves top speed about 40 41 miles per hour and this boat stuck the turns really well no slippage and skeeting across the water so I was very impressed the first time uh, I didn't throttle down I went through the S curves really really hard turned really sharp and this boat really bit good so this boat handles really well move on back uh, of course you see they have these poles here in the back that uh, help you trailer your boat uh, sticks up out of the water if it's really shallow uh, that is a big plus of course you have your hookups on the back here uh, that comes standard uh, these bolt holes here are for your swim ladder I elected to take that swim ladder off it does come optional with a swim ladder this one has the swim ladder but I took it removed it uh, these holes inside here uh, there is a rod holder for the cat fisherman that goes across the back I'll show you a picture of that I've taken I've removed that and that is and that rod rack let me turn this way and that rod rack is optional on this boat so you can order this boat or you can buy this boat without that catfish rod rack on the back now uh, I removed it I haven't used it but I'm thinking I control for crappy with it uh, out the rear haven't tested that but we'll be testing that this spring let's move on to the boat motor now if you're looking at this boat uh, this is the Mercury 115 command thrust four stroke motor and I elected I put a stainless steel prop I think that's a 19 pitch prop prop that I put on there you know, 19 came off of it and with a full tank of gas and just me in it uh, this boat will run about 42 now if I had you know 30 40 gallons of water in that front live well I could probably expect about 36 is what I'm thinking but I have not tested that theory out but that's just what I'm thinking now let's take a minute and we'll look in the back I'll let you see in the back of this boat if you've never seen one before this is your opportunity to see it and uh, I'll let you see in the back and you're gonna see an additional battery and I'm not gonna cover the extra stuff that I've done just yet I'll do that at the end of this video so raising up the battery compartment of course, here's your, here's your gas tank in the back here. This is your gas tank. You have your cranking battery here in the back. There's your two trolling motor batteries over here. Boom, right there. And then, of course, all of your wiring. And this is your pump here for your washdown. And your washdown hooks up uh, right here. And there is a switch there's a switch there at the console that turns that wash down on. I have not used that. Uh, I have not used that, but that is an option. You notice there's two pedestal seats. You notice there's two pedestal seats. I, I took the seats off of these just so I could, you, you can, so I could do the video. But you have a base here. You have a base in the middle. And a base here so the bases on the sides are for your rack that sits across the top for you catfishing and then they added that is looks like an aftermarket seat base there just in case you're bass fishing or crappy fishing and you just have a single person there now here in the back let's see let me turn around let me turn around this way so here in the back here uh, so you can orientate to where you are this side here lifts up and this is basically a storage compartment pretty good size storage compartment and I tell you what I did I drilled a hole in the bottom corner 
and I'm going to utilize this as a cooler or dry storage. This is about a 13, 14 gallon live well here. And there's where your water spout comes out. You turn, and you can look in that. That's, that's pretty good size. You can get a lot of crappy in there. Now that live well does have a continuous run switch on it or it, it's, on a, it's on a timer. And I think the timer is set about every five minutes or so. So uh, moving on forward, so, uh, so let's move forward and we'll just move to the front of the boat and I'll show you some of the things about it. So here's your gas cap. Moving forward, there's another small compartment here for keys and this compartment is very hard to open. And you see, I just got, uh, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that in there. Keys, registration, cup holders, rod box, rod box on the side. You can see this rod box is full of rods. And I think it would accommodate easily up to about an eight foot rod because you can see how big that deck is up there. And some of those seven foot rods stick out just a little bit. Now, one of the main reasons is this big live well right here on the front that a lot of catfishmen like this. If you're fishing for huge catfish, uh, those really big catfish, those uh, 40 to 100 pound catfish, of course you need a large size um, live well. Now I have chosen to use it as my storage just because it's a little more convenient back in the boat. So uh, real quickly, I'll take some of this stuff out so you can just see how big this live well is. Uh, let me set, this is uh, my minnow bucket. I'll take this out so you can see just how big this live well is. Now I've got a lot of stuff in it, uh, just sticking in there, but you can see that I could almost get down there and lay down in that live well. It has a rubber gasket around it, so if you fill, have it full of water, it won't splash out on you uh, while you're going down the lake. That's a nice feature. So moving to our console, I mounted my Garmin unit here. I have a ram mount here. Mounted it here. And I'm assuming this Hummingbird Helix came from the factory installed here. And this, uh, this dashboard would hold a seven inch screen if you so chose. I thought maybe it would hold a nine. I would have put this unit here, but it, it was not big enough. Uh, so you have your tachometer here you have your trim gauge so you have your trim gauge tachometer speedometer uh, gas there's your switch uh, 12 volt accessory boom your left side here so here you have your aerator you have your front pump here this is, goes to the front live well. Uh, bilge pump, navigation, of course your horn. And this does come with a uh, tilt steering. You can tilt your steering. And I like the tilt steering because when my wife operates the boat, she's going to want to tilt the wheel uh, differently than I do. So that makes it a little more comfortable for the operator. And up underneath the seat here, is uh, some storage. I'm gonna flip you over here and let you see that. So under each seat there is storage up under each the passenger seat. Uh, there's some storage and that storage goes all the way across here. The only negative thing that I would say about this particular aluminum boat is none of these compartments are uh, watertight so if you get caught in a rainstorm or you're fishing in the rain for whatever reason 
and you have anything with cloth in these boxes, you're going to need to remove that and dry it out. Or the next time you go fishing, you're going to have some moldy equipment. Uh, some of the compartments do have gaskets around them. But when I was power washing this boat right after I bought it, um, water, and I know I was power washing, but I did get water in all the compartments. So what I've done to combat that, a lot of the things that I store in these compartments, I'm putting in watertight uh, containers. And that way they're sealed up and I can quickly remove them in and out of the boat. The positive thing I would say about owning an aluminum boat versus my fiberglass boat with carpet is uh, I do a lot of hard fishing on the rivers, creeks, lake. People are in and out of the boat and the boat gets really nasty. And having this aluminum boat is really easy to clean. Much quicker cleaning this boat than it was the carpet on my fiberglass boat. That is one of the biggest reasons I switched over to the aluminum boat. Um, you know, I hope this review will help you make a decision or make you help you make an informed decision. It's one reason I do these videos is to inform you uh, so that you can make a, a, a good choice about what you're actually buying. These boats are not cheap. And uh, hey guys, I hope you've seen something in the video uh, that you enjoyed. I hope you've seen something in the video that you actually learned. Hey guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you subscribing and we appreciate all the subscribers that we do have. Uh, remember, God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Hey, hit that like button below, click the notification bell so you don't miss an episode of Wildlife Adventures. And as always, you remember, it's a wildlife and I'll see you on the water. Anyway, didn't cost me nothing. I already had that. And, uh, I just put some foam insulation around it and taped it up real good. Hey, and it does a great job. But I go to the lake all the time and people say, what's that black pole right there for? <laughs> it's kind of funny, so I have to explain it to them.